Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Open my eyes to find Sari's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Hee hee hee, sorry. Wait, actually I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, sorry. Hee hee hee. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, uh, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's the secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. You can't even do that. Look, sorry, it's written all over you. Eh? Sorry, glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah. Uh, Rub my fingertips down the side of Sari's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I tried to wipe out the stain with my finger. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Ooh. Hee 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 hee. Oh, that was that was her plan all along, guys. All along! Her plan was to do this. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? They don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Ah, uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this the one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Well, I, I don't know about that. Hmm. Does this thing even fit you properly? Hee hee hee. It did when I bought it. Uh. If you ever bought it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. But don't say that out loud. Hee hee hee. Anyway. You look much better now, so... Ah. Uh, why does it feel so strange to see Cyrus' blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Ooh. Not worth it at all. Sorry, Hasty unbuttons her blazer once more. Well. Phew. That's so much better. Sari puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Oh, Kev Gooey. Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. Come on. Come on, Kev Gooey. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things! Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Okay, only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. What's the deal? Hee hee hee. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. Huh. You're doing it again, Sayuri. Aw, oh, but I was joking that time. 
And impossible to tell with you sometimes. I'm pretty sure she wasn't joking. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica Sunny calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Happy, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. Failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sari still trusts her way to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, yeah I, ch I chose like 20 words. That popped up. A relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sari and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sari uh, is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Oh, ooh, oh. I did not know this was a th- uh, ooh, hmm. You know what? I feel like... I feel like... It might... Ooh... Ugh, I'm gonna show Monica first. Hmm, we're made sorry. Let's go with Monica. I had a feeling it might be Monica. I just start with Monica. Yesterday, she seemed eager to read my poem, and I want her to know I'm putting in effort. Oh, oh, good, good idea, good idea. Hi, Cap Gooey. Having a good time so far? Ah, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. That's that's like me! Anyway, want to share your poem with me? Kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah ha 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 ha. Don't worry, Cap Gooey. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Monica, my poem. Mm-hmm. I like this one. <gasps> Ooh. Makes me think of something Sayuri would like. That's so. You and Sayuri are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, oh, well. You may be good friends, but Sayuri and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Ah ha ha, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. Sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor. An angry boyfriend. I'll never know I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorching up 
with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices. Realized now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in. Wow, I only chose 20 words and she just wrote an actual cool poem. Alright. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very... Reform if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ah ha ha, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Yeah, pretty much. That's why you gotta like, you know, review and edit after you write like a long, you know, paper on something. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. Just So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Oh my gosh, what a great advice. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Wait, was that for me or for... Huh. Well, anyways, I'm going to end the episode here, everybody. We're going to pick someone else in the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!